to share one other thing with you. Um, yeah, and the reason why I do this, why I make my own uh, soap bars, and, and why I want 100% lard soap, um, before I use the Fels naphtha. And, you know, you actually have to go online now to find out um, exactly what's in, in this bar of soap. It says ingredients. This is cleaners, soil and stain removers, chelating agents, colorants, and perfume. So I did. I went online to find out exactly what is in a bar of Fels naphtha. And it says there is soap. It's got sodium taloate, sodium cocoate, or sodium palmate kernelate, and sodium palmate. What that is, is that's just the saponified um, oils of either tallow, which is lard, coconut oil, or palm oil or palm kernel oil. So it's just saying it's soap. The next thing is water, talc, and it's got coconut acid, palm acid, and tallow acid. And I'm not really sure why those would be in there, but um, or why they would be acids. But the next thing that it says is PEG-6 methyl ether. So remember that, remember that, because I'm going to talk about talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. The other is glycerin, which we know what glycerin is. Sorbitol, that's, I think, a sugar. The other, sodium chloride, well, we know that's a salt. The next one is pentasodium pentate and or tetrasodium, uh, this other word, E-T-I-D-R-O-N-A-T-E. -E. So that's the other two I want you to think about. Titanium dioxide, we know that's just a white, um, like talc substance, it occurs naturally in, in nature, and uh, it's a whitening agent. It's what you put in, in your soaps and things to make them white. Uh, fragrance, and then it's got the colors, acid orange and acid yellow. So the first one, going back, the PEG-6 methyl ether, I looked that up. That's also known as 2-methoxyethanol. And I pulled the MSDS on that. And let me turn this fan. Um, I looked at a good place to go is JT Baker. It's a Malincrot company, but um, it's Malincrot Baker Inc. And you can get some uh, MSDS uh, MSDSs there on, on different uh, chemicals. And I'm looking at the hazard identification. I don't know if you can see this. But it's got health rating 3, severe life. Flammable rating is 2, moderate. Reactivity rating 2, moderate. Contact rating 2, moderate. And they are saying, you know, they want you to have goggles and a shield, lab coat and apron, vent hood, proper gloves, and a fire extinguisher. Um, it's moderately toxic, can cause headache, fatigue, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, and weakness. Uh, liver damage, pancreas damage, brain edema. Resulting in death has occurred in human exposure of 3 grams per kilogram. Damage to kidneys is possible from ingestion of large quantities. Skin contact may cause irritation with redness and pain may be absorbed through the skin with possible systematic effects. Okay, well, you know, they're listing this, that one chemical in Felsnaphtha. That right there on the skin contact, you know, for people who have sensitive skin and have trouble with detergents and things like that that they use that they commercially buy, you know, you've got to you've got to look. You've got to look into the details to get the information. And and right there it says, skin contact may cause irritation with redness and pain, may be absorbed through the skin with possible systematic effects. So, um, 
you know, that, that's not good on the Felsenap that that's in there. The next thing they were talking about was the pentasodium pentatate. And uh, I looked that up and I found that um, there's another long name for it. Same thing. It's used in soaps as a water softener and to protect dyes and perfumes from combining with metals in a solution. It's considered a chelating agent. So um, it's a water softener, basically. Well, you know, the washing soda that I use, or the borax, I think it's the washing soda, actually softens the water. And it's a natural product. It's not, you know, a, a, a chemical that's put together um, with a with a really, <laughs> really, really long name. So, um, but on this one here, on the pentasodium pentatate, health rating is a one. It's a slight for cancer. Well, uh, Flammability rating is one slight. So that's nothing on that. Contact rating is two, which is moderate. Lab protective equipment, goggles, lab coat, proper gloves. Um, potential health effects, inhalation, it causes irritation to the respiratory tract. Symptoms may include coughing, shortness of breath. Um, you know, if you it, ingest it in large oral doses, that's, that's not good. Okay, skin contact. Causes irritation to skin. Symptoms include redness, itching, and pain. Okay, well, <laughs> yeah, there we go again. You know, it, it's, it's something that's added. Go back over here. As a water softener. And to protect dyes and perfumes from combining with metals in a solution. So... You know, this, from here up, this is the list of ingredients for Felsnaphtha. And I got that right off of the Purex website, purex.com. Compare that to sodium hydroxide, which is lye, and water, and lard, and the sodium hydroxide 100% reacts with the lard to make soap. So I have 100% soap here. On this one here, I did put a, an essential oil, which is peppermint, which is, you know, that's a natural thing. But you can also make this without any scent which, whatsoever, which I will be doing. And the next ingredient, washing soda, which is sodium carbonate. Borax, which is sodium tetraborate. You know what that is. And the last item, pure baking soda. Um, when I mix this up and I use this on my laundry, I, you know, I know what I'm putting on my clothes. I know what I'm washing my clothes in. And, um, yeah, you know, I, I try to tell people whatever you wash your clothes in, you know, that's what you're putting on your body. You know, you are, not all of this comes out. Not all of your detergent comes out of your clothes in the wash. So, you know, whatever you're washing your clothes in is what you're also wearing on your body. So, um, for people who have really sensitive skin or have had trouble with detergents before in the past and maybe they break them out or... Uh, they're they're allergic to them, uh, a skin reaction or either you know uh, allergies or or whatever you know th this is a good thing to try and see if this works better um, that's what I had to do with my daughter and for us it works so that you know this is what we use so um, but I just wanted to kind of go over that a little bit and kind of go into the history of why um, I like to do this and use this on my laundry um, versus a commercial um, laundry detergent. You know, a lot of the commercial laundry detergents, they have uh, UV inhibitors and um, they have optical brighteners. 
uh, things that they say, you know, to keep your clothes from, from fading. And, but, you know, those are all chemicals. And the more that you have in there, the more likely um, that if you have sensitive skin that you're going to be allergic to one of those one of those products or one of those chemicals. So, you know, I try to go as, um, as safe as I can on the laundry and um, just use the, the fewest amount of ingredients that I can. And this is what we've found so far works for us. So I'm going to go over the recipe one more time. It is one ground up bar of soap. Ground up or use it in your food processor with one half cup of baking soda. Then add to that, add one cup of the washing soda and one cup of the borax. And try to do it on, like by an open window or under a range hood. Um, because it will be a little bit dusty and then to wash your clothes all you need is one tablespoon for a regular load and two tablespoons for a heavy load and, uh, and that's how easy it is so I, I hope I've helped y'all out on that and uh, if you have any questions you know post them in the comments and I'm trying to do better to uh, <laughs> to get back to all those and answer those but uh, anyway y'all have a good day see you later